Hi, welcome to session 4 of this course, using Cassandra and Spring Data for Persistence. In this session, we are going to take a look at how to create Docker containers and use them as our database, how to configure Spring Data Reactive for Cassandra DB, and how to perform CRUD operations with Spring Data. So, in this video, we are going to be creating our DB using Docker. In this video, we are going to take a look at what is and why we use Docker, what is the Docker Hub, and how to start our first Docker container. As you might remember from session 1 of this course, we downloaded and installed Docker. Docker is an application that allows to run Docker containers. But before getting into the details, let's see why we need Docker containers. Previously, when you wanted to deploy an app, cloud provider, node, or server, you use the concept of virtual machines. Virtual machines are composed by an app, or several apps, binaries and libraries, and a guest OS. The main problem with the VMs is that they are very heavy. The main reason is that they have a guest OS, and usually this guest OS takes a lot of space. Also, because they are very heavy, and they have a whole OS on them, they consume a lot of resource from the host OS or the host node that is basically holding the VMs, making them not the ideal option now that with cloud providers you pay by resources. So developers came with the concept of containers and nowadays the most popular is Docker containers. So Docker containers are run by the application Docker. And the main difference between containers and VMs is that containers do not need to have dedicated OS. They can run on the whole OS, in this case managed by Docker, making them much smaller than virtual machines. By being more smaller, they consume less resources, they are easy to deploy, and you spend less on your cloud provider due to the fact that you need less resources, right? This has been groundbreaking and right now in the engineering industry and software industry, many, many big companies are using containers, Netflix, Amazon, etc. So a little bit of Docker. Docker containers allow us to run software isolated from the environment. Docker containers are ephemeral. This means that if you destroy a Docker container and start it again, it will behave exactly the same. Docker containers avoid the common problem while well, it runs in my machine. This is excellent, especially with cloud deployments, because with Docker, you can be sure that a Docker container run in a Windows machine, Mac machine, Linux machine on AWS will run exactly the same, avoiding the problem when you run an application locally and it works, and then they take it to deploy on production and it doesn't work because there is some environment variable that is run defined or some library that doesn't match. This is one of the main reasons I love Docker. So the Docker Hub. Docker Hub is the GitHub of Docker images. There are over 100k Docker images available on Docker Hub. There are official and unofficial images. Official images are images that are developed by the official entity behind the software or application. And unofficial images are images created by developers around the world. More info on hub.docker.com but I want to show you the website myself okay so in docker hub you can find tons and tons of docker images docker images are basically instructions to create a docker container and you can see images from engines for alpine redis mysql mongodb etc in this case for our application we are going to use cassandra so let's look for Cassandra. As you can see, there is an official image for Cassandra. And here it is. You can find the versions available and information about the container and configurations that you can use with the container. Okay, now let's run our first container. Okay, let's go to our terminal. In order to run a container first, we need the image. To get the image, we need to pull it from Docker Hub. To pull it, we use the command docker pull, then the name of the image, 
and then the version in this case we're going to use 3.11.1 and let's pull it okay i have the image ready then you get the image to run a container using the image let's click here so in order to run a container we use the command docker run then we specify the name of the container using the flag name then we want to run this container on the background so we use the flag d as a demo process and then docker containers do not expose any of its ports outside docker so if you need to access any of the ports you need to expose it using the flag dash p then you specify the port number you want to expose outside the docker container in this case 9042 then you define the internal port you want to expose in this case it's 9042 we're using 9042 because cassandra runs on this port by default and then we specify the name of the docker image that is cassandra and the version okay and we can run it perfect now if we want to see the progress we run docker logs dash f to see the logs on the instance and the name of the container of course okay perfect now we can see here starting listening for sql clients on 0.0.09042 perfect this means that our docker container is running successfully pretty cool right so to exit we press ctrl c and that's it